Welcome to another video. Today I want to go over three diseases that can actually be prevented through a healthy whole food plant-based diet. Now I am not going to go over the most common diseases such as heart disease, high blood pressure, diabetes, or colorectal cancer, but instead I thought let's pick three diseases which are maybe a little less common, maybe you haven't heard about them, and that way it will be a little bit interesting to learn about something new that again is related to diet and lifestyle. Now before we start, let me just remind you that Vivo Life is the sponsor of this channel. If you're interested in trying out any of their health or fitness products, check the link in the description box below. You can use my code Leo10 for 10% off. So that being said, let's start off with the first disease which is gallstone disease. Now the pathology or the abnormality, if you will, in gallstone disease is obviously in the name. You have stones in your gallbladder. You're not supposed to have stones. The risk factors for gallstone disease are going to be the female gender, where females tend to have gallstones twice as often as males. That's why you see female to male ratio of two to one. Certain ethnic backgrounds may have an increased risk. For example, Native Americans can sometimes have up to 60% rates of gallstones in populations, which is very high when you consider that the normal population has only around 10% prevalence or 10% of people have gallstones. Another risk is going to be obesity, being overweight. Obviously, we know this is not good for your health. High fat diet can do it, high cholesterol can do it. Interestingly enough, rapid weight loss this is another, yet another reason why we should try to aim for a healthy, sustained, slow weight loss rather than this really rapid weight loss. And then last but not least, we have a couple of diseases that may increase your risk, such as liver cirrhosis, which is essentially non-reversible liver damage, as well as Crohn's disease, which is an inflammatory bowel disease. Gallstones are usually diagnosed through an ultrasound of the gallbladder where you can actually see the stones in place and you can sometimes see signs of inflammation around the gallbladder as well. Let's go over the symptoms. For those of you who are interested, people with gallstones get a colicky pain in their gallbladder area. This is going to be in the right upper quadrant. Just so you know, in medicine, we tend to divide the abdomen up in quadrants. And the right upper quadrant is going to be on the right side of the abdomen, right under where the liver is. This pain is going to be colicky, which means it comes and goes, and it's going to be worse after fatty foods. Now for the treatment, there's going to be one main treatment here, which is going to be surgery. All the doctors around the world are probably going to recommend this as it is a permanent solution to the problem. If you remove the gallbladder, the stones can't cause you no harm. So that is going to be the most recommended the treatment. It's going to be the removal of your gallbladder. Now, the other treatment here is a bile acid called ursodeoxycholic acid. This is usually recommended to people who are non-surgical candidates. Now, as if you already know me in this channel, I prefer to avoid things from happening in the first place. So for me, prevention is always going to be the more interesting thing. Here for prevention of gallstones, we have lifestyle modification. One of the modifying things that you can do to prevent this is a whole food plant-based diet. As you can see from the risk factors, if you're on a whole food plant-based diet, you're going to have reduced rates of obesity. That is one of the risk factors. You're going to reduce your cholesterol. Obviously you can have a low fat, whole food, plant-based diet. So this is one way where you can reduce your risk of having gallstones. Second disease we're going to talk about is gout. You may not have heard about gout, but basically what it is is the deposition of monosodium urate crystals or uric acid crystals in your joints. Here on the risk factors, actually males have a higher risk with a three to one male to female ratio. And the other risk factor is going to be hyperuricemia, as we say in smart medical terms, but basically just means you have high uric acid levels in the blood. For the symptoms, we got red hot swollen joints. Some of you may know about the Latin stuff, right? The rubor, calor, tumor, and then the dolor, which is the pain. These can be extremely, extremely painful. This is a typical patient that when a doctor tries to examine, they will be crying on pain. They won't let the doctor touch the joint because it is in so much pain. Gout is going to be diagnosed through an arthrocentesis. Again, I apologize for these big words. Basically, that just means you're putting a needle into the joint, you're pulling out some of the fluid, and then you're looking it under a microscope to see, again, it sounds very fancy, but what we call negative birefringent needle-shaped crystals. Basically, just crystals that look a certain way and tells the doctor this is, in fact, gout. Now, for the treatment, their doctors are going to recommend if it's an acute attack, an acute flare, it's going to be non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs such as ibuprofen or something called colchicine, 
Colchicin can cause a lot of diarrhea, so it's not very popular. And in chronic cases, you use allopurinol and probenicid. Again, the most important, most interesting in my opinion, the prevention. What can you do to prevent getting more gouty attacks once you've had them and therefore also prevent from having them in the first place? Well, reducing your alcohol intake, reducing certain diuretics, which are drugs or medications that pull fluid through the kidneys. And one of the popular medications that does this is blood pressure medications such as hydrochlorothiazide can be associated with gout. So reducing those medications can be very helpful. Reducing your intake of red meat and reducing your intake of seafood. So here, once again, a whole food plant-based diet will very naturally reduce your intake of seafood and will reduce your intake of red meat. And actually, one of the things that a plant-based diet has been shown to reduce the risk of is high blood pressure or hypertension. So if you don't have high blood pressure, you probably won't need any of these blood pressure medications. Now, for the last but not least, we're gonna talk about diverticulosis. Now, diverticulosis is an outpouching of the colon through the muscular layer of the intestines where it's not supposed to be. Risk factors for this one is going to be very clear. So increased intake of red meat, decreased intake of fiber, and another risk factor is being above 50 years of age. So this is a slow cumulative process that happens over a lifetime. Because of this, most people don't know that they have it until something happens. Now there is a few directions that diverticulosis can go, a few complications. One of them is diverticular spasm, which will happen after a meal, where you get postprandial pain or just after a meal pain, which is relieved by having a bowel movement or going to the toilet. The way to prevent future spasms when you have diverticulosis is actually to go on a high fiber diet. Now, the other thing that can happen is diverticular bleed. These bleeds usually stop by themselves, so you don't have to do much about it, or the doctors won't have to do much about it. But depending on the severity, there's a few things that can happen. First and foremost, if you're bleeding a lot, they might have to give you IV fluids or blood product infusions. They might have to perform electrocautery, where they use electricity to actually burn or close the bleeding vessels to stop the active bleeding. And in very severe cases, they might actually do surgery, which is going to be a colectomy which means removing the diseased part of your intestine or your large bowel. Now, the most common complication we are going to talk about is diverticulitis. This is when you have inflammation, infection, and even sometimes perforation of those outpouchings. And it presents very much like appendicitis, except on the left side instead of the right. And for those of you who have had appendicitis or know anyone who has had appendicitis, this is a very severe disease. You can be feverish, you can be vomiting, you can be nauseated, you can be confused. You have a lot of pain. And when a doctor examines someone with appendicitis, they will have something called involuntary guarding, where their abdomen will be very rigid no matter what they do. And when they press down on the abdomen and let go, they have rebound tenderness. Again, a lot of pain. With diverticulitis, of course, the difference is it's going to be on the left side of the body and usually in older patients rather than the traditional young patients who get appendicitis. Treatment is going to be NPO, which is the medical term for nil per orum, or basically no food or drinks through the mouth. You're trying to give your intestines a rest. We're going to be giving the patients IV fluids and antibiotics to fight the infection. Now, if you have an abscess, you actually have a walled up space where the antibiotics may not be able to penetrate to resolve the infection. In that case, you might need the drainage. And in severe cases, again, you might need surgery. The way the doctor will actually look for this is taking an x-ray and looking for air under the diaphragm or air in the abdomen, which is a sign that there's been a perforation. If this happens, it's a surgical emergency and they might actually have to go in and remove part of your bowel. Now, the most important thing about diverticulosis is, again, the bottom here, prevention, is a very, very well-known way to prevent this, and that is to eat less meat and to eat more fiber. And I remember the first time I came across this when I was a medical student, I was in the pathology lab, we were doing an autopsy on someone, and the pathologist was showing us different things, like here's the heart disease, you see the arteries are clogged up, here you see the kidneys, they've had an infarct here, and then we got to the intestines and they were like, okay, look at all of these outpouchings. This person has diverticulosis, and this is actually caused by meat. At the time, I was already on a plant and I was like, whoa, 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 wait. So you know it's for sure it's caused by meat? And the pathologist goes, yeah, people who don't eat meat don't get this disease. If you have always been on a plant-based diet, you never have to worry about any of these diseases or their really nasty complications that can happen. So that is it. In summary, these are three diseases that can actually be prevented through a healthy 
plant-based lifestyle. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, leave a comment, and if you would like to support this channel, consider checking out my Patreon, where you can donate whatever amount you feel is adequate in order to support this channel. The people on my Patreon will have early access to my videos, as well as a bigger say in terms of what videos I make next. So if that sounds like something you're interested, Dr. Leo Venus on Patreon, I have a link in the description box as well. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.